All right, guys, welcome to another video. And as you know from my channel, I really focus on Porsches. I love the Porsche brand, but we've got something different this time, something that's worth taking a real close look at. This is a 2019 Ford Mustang GT350, and it's been updated for this year. So we're gonna go over what the new updates are. Let's do some driving and driving impressions just to see what it's all about. And let's see how it compares to the 911 GTS. And let's see if it can impress me, a Porsche owner. And you know what? I think it will. This thing looks really, really badass. So let's check it out. All right, guys, let's start off with what is unchanged, actually, and that is the flat plane V8 engine in this car. It's 5.2 liter, 526 horsepower, 429 foot-pounds of torque, naturally aspirated V8 engine. So with that flat plane crankshaft, it allows for higher revving and quicker revving. So this thing revs out to 8200, 8250 RPM, and that is screaming. So why flat plane crankshaft? Well, they're straight, they spin faster, but the conventional crankshaft just doesn't spin as freely and as quickly as the flat plane does. So flat plane crankshafts are commonly used in race cars as well as high-end cars like Ferraris and things like that. So it's great to get a flat plane crankshaft in a car like this uh, at a much lower price point than say a Ferrari. And you get that thrilling, quick revving V8 uh, that you get experience in some of those high dollar cars and race cars. So the 5.2 liter V8 Voodoo engine, which is what it's nicknamed by Ford, carries over this year. And it's a unique engine to the 350. So that carries over, but what's new? Let's start with the tires. Ford partnering with Michelin to really make improvement to the Sport Cup 2 tires. These are specifically made for the Mustang GT350, a unique compound. They adjusted the design, provides even more grip than the previous version. In addition, they have a new design for the wheels as well for 2019, and they've got Brembo brakes with huge, huge discs on them. But with these new tires with even more grip, they had to make some adjustments to the suspension, the Magna Ride springs are a bit stiffer. The handling should be a lot sharper in this car with the sticky tires and the upgrades that they've made to the suspension. They made some changes to the aerodynamic downforce and efficiency of the car. One thing they did was in this front end grill here, they actually closed off the grill a little bit more than before because they discovered that the more open grill allowed too much air to get into this opening and provided some lift at the front end, which you do not want when you're going at high speed. So they closed it, they narrowed up the slit in this grill a little bit more to reduce that front end lift. In addition, they made a big change, which looks awesome here in the back, and that's this new fancy wing back here, which provides even more downforce. And it's a combination of spoiler, which provides downforce and a wing, which allows some air to go through it as well. And this was developed in conjunction with the new upcoming GT500, which hasn't yet to be released and placed on this GT350. This particular wing has an additional gurney flap here, as you can see this kind of piece sticking up, which increases the downforce even more. So this is, I think, an $850 option uh, to add this. And it kind of just bolts onto the back and provides even more downforce. So clearly this car is really, really optimized for the track. Another change in the 2019 model is that it now has transmission, oil, and differential coolers already built in and standard, which means that this car will not overheat during repeated track use. And that was an issue with the earlier GT350s that didn't have these components and it would frustrate uh, drivers because their car would overheat on track. But now Ford has addressed this by including those things standard on the 2019 model. And that's one thing I will say about Porsche, my 911. I went 
on a track day at Watkins Glen, I never had any inkling of a problem with overheating. I didn't have to really watch the oil temperature very much because it was always under control. Porsches are developed to be used on track. Well, this Ford is equipped to do the same. drive but here are some first impressions after dealing with some rough pavement and rush hour traffic is this car feels like it's strangled in those conditions the car feels totally solid rock solid over the bumps but uh, here in New York there are some terrible roads and uh, it really will jerk you around to this uh, Tremec system. The, shift, the shifting is quite good. It reminds me of Milton's numeric shift, short shift uh, mechanism that he put in his 911 GTS. You can see that video. I'll link that video in the description. It snaps back to center, which is interesting. Oh man, this engine is crazy, it's so good. I wish I could take this to a track. The brakes seem grabbier, but filled with confidence. Once you get used to how the bite point is so sharp, you can modulate it, you get used to it, and, and it feels great. I mean, this is an awesome, awesome vehicle so far to drive. All right, guys, the interior seems uh, pretty well put together. If you're buying a car like this, you really want this for the performance that it provides. This is not a luxury car. So the fit and finish is fine. There's some deviated stitching here and there. Uh, you know, there's some plastics. I'm in these Recaro seats. They are very comfortable, all manually operated. The passenger side seat curiously doesn't have height adjustment, which is curious, um, but the driver side does. It's very easy for me in the driver's seat to find a comfortable position. And boy, these Recaro seats just hug you in place. The materials are a little basic in their feel and touch, but they are very functional. It's still a nice place to do some, some good driving. But that's what you're buying this car for, is that flat plane crank V8 engine and that sound that it puts out. Also, all of the other capabilities that this car provides, that's what people are buying this car for, is the engineering, and just the excitement that this car provides. All right, now that I've had this car out and about, people really want to know everything about this car. They walk up to me and want to know what it is, how fast does it go. They admire that blue color. They think the car just looks fantastic. It really attracts a crowd. So the curb appeal in this car is just off the charts. This car is full of drama and full of aggression. And I love it. I just love it for those reasons. It's, it's fantastic. This is a big car. It feels bigger than the 911, but it handles pretty well. It corners very flat, even in normal mode at these low speeds. Again, I'm keeping the speed down because it's rush hour and the police are out like crazy. But tomorrow morning, I'm going to take this car out on my one of my favorite country roads and really see how it can handle the twisties. Hello, policeman. Well, good morning. I'm getting up early this morning to go out to one of my favorite roads to see what this car is really like. I put the GT350 into its most softest setting and it's a pussycat. You know, yes, I'm tram lining a little bit on this highway, just in certain parts, but not too bad. Uh, these have really wide front tires, 295 sections. And it doesn't seem too loud in here on the highway. It's actually quite comfortable. When you're in sport mode, the steering feels much more responsive and, and quicker. But yeah, I'm finding this to be a very livable, 
livable car. I could see you doing a long journey in this. just as much fun as the 911 GTS. However, I do feel the weight transfer in this car a little bit more than I would in a 911, so you do feel the weight. But what a blast to drive. It really is phenomenal. Whatever that special sauce, that special recipe they came up with in making those adjustments have really paid off. The car really handles phenomenally well. I'm so happy with it and so pleased with it and impressed by it. I'm impressed with what this car is capable of. And of course, in addition to the great handling, um, the engine, the engine is something so special. It sounds great, but it pulls hard. It's linear because it's naturally aspirated. And it, it's just, it's just a jewel. It really is a jewel. It sounds phenomenal. I could just listen to that all day, every day. And on the highway, on the way here, I had everything in normal mode. The car was quiet, as relatively speaking, um, and it handled the bumps of the road very well. It was a pussycat on the, on the way here. I, I'm, it's an all-around vehicle. I, I really am impressed with it. The shifts, the, the H pattern is very tight, tightly packed. Um, so you just have to be forceful and quick with what you're doing. But it's a good, it's a good uh, manual transmission. It's a good positive feedback. All right, so I've spent some serious time in the Ford and I have to say it's pretty amazing. I think it stacks up very well. It's a $64,000 car as this one is equipped. 
and boy, it really handles the turn. It's very comparable in, in the fun factor to my 911 GTS. And at this price point, it's a pretty amazing deal. At $64,000, it's about half the price of what a new 992 Carrera S would, get, would go for. So how does it stack up to the Porsche 911? Well, here are some differences that I found. I found that the Porsche 911 just feels a little bit more nimble in the turns. It feels a little bit more lightweight. Uh, and I like that feeling. It just hugs the road in a way that is very special and unique, maybe because of its rear engine layout, all the engineering that went into it, and, and its lighter weight. The GT350 is a fantastic beast in the twisties. I mean, don't sleep on that car. Just because it's a little bigger, a little heavier, it still handled the turns uh, incredibly well on my uh, spirited drive out in the country roads. And that engine, the engine sound is just incredible. I mean, it's just theatrics all the way around it. You just can't deny that. And if you want just a lot of fun, that GT350 will provide you that fun. So it's, it's a different personality. I would say that the Porsche is a little bit more refined. It's still a lot of fun. It's a kick-ass car. The GTS gives you a lot of thrills, but the Ford is more beastly. You know, it's more of a hammer. They're both excellent cars. You know, I'm a Porsche guy, so I'm gonna stick with the Porsche, of course, but this GT350 is pretty, it's pretty awesome. So Ford Performance, they really did that 350 right. It's a great, great performance car. A lot of fun. All right, guys, with that, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one. Safe driving, everybody.